finished. She's like, you only got five five minutes or so. I was like, for what? She's like, oh, yeah. I was like, oh, fuck. That's how you know it's going to be a good one. No prep. It's not like I ever prep anyways. At least we'll be able to hear it this week and not be a robot. That'll be pretty cool. Back in the tuck. Sine waves, the original. We're the original. One and only. <laughs> um, and Todd, uh, running the Discord visual. Um. Hey, good morning, brother. Uh, it's very, very agreeable temperatures. Sunlight just had that amazing eclipse. Yeah, it feels feels amazing. I mean, at least physically. You know, non physically, I don't think it's too bad. But there are people that are having a pretty tough time. I think post eclipse. Really, kind of get in the. Well, I mean, just like accidents, sickness. You know, kind of a lot of that. It's kind of like a constant full moon energy. It it feels like. Like it's a, yeah. Uh, I give it a good probably six weeks after the eclipse. We're still feeling uh, it's going to just feel like constant full moon. I mean, it's just loaded. It's just a hot circuit. Mm. So, yeah, I feel that. Yeah. But um, yeah, man, how's uh, how's stuff in the world, Todd? Very good. Yeah. Busy, super busy, trying to. Our graphics for a collaboration with the Columbus Dance Theater. And, um, that's next week. Making cool stuff for that and uh, going good. Well, that's awesome. You guys got a production coming up? Yeah, we have three shows next weekend. Oh. Yeah. Just one show an evening and then. Um, uh, and it's you, choreography, huh? Yeah, they have a whole routine they did, and it's amazing. <laughs> That's cool, man. Uh, Reminds me of like the uh, when you see a, like a group of birds flying together, doing movements and stuff. It just shows us what we're possible of, right? With humans, We've got right. this pre-planned dance we're gonna do. Everybody, learn it. This oh has God. like a lot of improv too, though. Pretty cool. So, the uh, great. Um, That's cool. Yeah. Otherwise, I don't know. Uh, busy. We're very busy anyway. Uh, looking forward to the break, and it's. Yeah. yeah you guys I... been pretty wet on rain. Yeah, it's super rain here. Um... Oh shit! I heard a. Uh, I don't know if it's true. Maybe you're kind of closer to it all, but I guess some kind of barges uh, broke loose uh, on the Ohio and they shut like bridges down in Pittsburgh. Did you hear anything about that up your way? They saw some stuff on Twitter, but I didn't really dive in. I couldn't find any like real stories about it. I just saw a few posts. Yeah, man. Um, 
Stuff so on my side has been pretty decent. The, the break, uh, the week off in Florida was nice. Yeah, of course, work's always busy. Um, and uh, other than that, man, I'm soaking in this beautiful weather. Spent all day yesterday outside. I built um, like five of those squirrel box things. I've been making them like condominiums pretty much with double porches and water dish. And I've been getting pretty carried away with it, honestly. But. Um, but it's fun, man. We've got millions of baby squirrels running around the property because the 15 boxes that are already up are uh, popping babies out right now. Oh, so, awesome. Yeah, man. Other than that, uh, I'm just kind of... I'm doing pretty good, feeling pretty good. I don't know. I feel... Like, my neck shit's been bogging me down over kind of like really like months like i feel like it's progressively working into just weirder deeper things that are that's that are moving around in there and I, I don't know it, it's kind of scary in one sense but it's kind of like a mystery in another so i imagine most people are really going to go to the hospital with it like that i do only because i'm a strong believer Effect. Or the no as long as I can, if I can keep it a positive mystery within my consciousness, then I feel like the sky's the limit with whatever it is. Right. I mean, it's my core yeah. moving. So uh, I don't know. I mean, I feel like it's it's a good good thing. I always notice my like my sinuses and my nose breathing, like I've said over the last year or two, like it's, it's increasingly getting better and better and better and clearer and clearer. Like I'm kicking mucus out, but I'm just down to like the serious core strands of it where it feels like it solidifies up. Like once you kind of start moving it and stuff, like if, I don't know, it's like a sap where it just gets hard again. If that makes any sense. And then, <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. No. Uh, you're like, no, that doesn't make any sense there. Um, but yeah, I was going through a pretty, like, I'd wake up in the mornings, man, and I, I would just be, like, sore, feeling like, oh, fucks, today the day, like, something happens in there where <laughs> I turn to stone or what have <laughs> you. And, and I'm on probably week two now. I really, after the, uh, the Florida trip, it's feeling quite a bit better. So. Maybe some salt water and some sunlight. I got a shit ton of sun. I sat in the sun for like five days. Oh, yeah. In Florida, dude. I charge you up. Mm -hmm. Big time. Uh, let's see. I got a gold necklace, too. I don't know if that has anything to do with it. I've always been a big believer of not wearing physical gold just yeah. because you already are gold. And, you know, it's kind of like a duplication. Uh, I don't know. It's kind of kind of ego -y and just a bunch of things that i've never really stood for but i bought one anyways and um i don't know that could be helping too i mean when you put a ring of frequency around your neck all day and wear it it can obviously do things so i mean i imagine it can it's contributing to your field so that's how all jewelry is that's why you see the um reminds me of the breastplates with the jewels in it you see you know where all the I don't know, just all the weird trinkets they used to wear, Native Americans. I saw something today where the um, the feathers, so the Native Americans held that the birds, they were very special because they could see the, the magnetic and the electric, kind of like the fields or whatnot, and that's how they uh, migrate and they operate. So they would watch, they would see, they would study the movements of the birds so they could study the movements of the electromagnetism and essentially the feathers uh, are what interact with this field and they like they vibrate or something like that they're they're essentially an antenna they're picking up this information and they're attaching to it and they're attracted to it it's like a magnetic attraction so they would use the feathers when they would find them they would feel like they were gifts put it put along their path they would collect them, and of course, they'd you know put them on their head. Um, there's a lot of symbology behind that, but one of the things I guess that were associated with it were that 
the feathers would act as telepathic devices where a chief could sit in silence and contemplation and come up with plans and, and, and directives and they, then the other chiefs of the other tribes would you know they'd be sitting in their meditation with their feathers on their head and they would get things without words or sounds you know being spoken and um yeah i collect feathers man i think that's pretty neat nice. makes sense um i, mean, I uh uh, I uh, did that myself for a while. I got a whole basket of them. <laughs> oh wow, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some of them are chicken feathers though, and chickens don't fly, so I got some probably well, inappropriate they say feathers. If you find one on uh find one on like a walk or something when you're kind of contemplative mode. Um uh -huh. you like an you know, it can then those colors can have like meat. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's tr that's a good point. Because they're pretty special. But then sometimes you like find like area with there's like <laughs> feathers and everything all over. The right. Yeah. Yeah. The geese are kind of annoying, but you gotta love them still. <laughs> yeah. I I wanted to. That's, I think it was like three or four years ago. I started collecting feathers because I was gonna build a. I don't know, some kind of flying ship. I figured first thing you're going to need are feathers if you're going to fly. Um, that's kind of where I... Oh, and bird bones. Bird bones were supposed to be very sacred, at least they were to me. I mean, how do you get this? It's just a different kind of bone. It's really light. And it's strong, but it's barely weighs anything. Hmm. So yeah, I was going to collect all these bird bones like thousands of pounds of them which you know would take multiple lives and i'd have to communicate with my next life to show it where the bird bone stash is to keep adding to it and then eventually i could grind down all these bones into like a um a keel for a ship that flies <laughs> in the sky and i would take all my feathers and then i would make the sails out of that and it would lift the the ship with a strong keel you know i guess a keel is for like Make sure you stay on a straight path, essentially. So, thinking of like the backbone and the ship, whatever that thing's called, that would be a hundred percent bird bone, and then all your feather would be the sails, and I need to have a bird in the sky, you know. I think it's possible. No, why not? I mean, this thing all runs on placebo. You can just think it into creation, pretty much. And um, thoughts aren't yours, they're thoughts. So, T H O T S. So, use use thought power. Uh, right, yeah. I'll learn how to yeah. think. Uh, well, tell me about uh, your eclipse experience. I thought, I thought it was pretty, pretty awesome myself. I think you thought it was felt it was pretty sacred. Um, yeah, awesome. we had clouds. I mean, it was, it was clear all day until about an hour before. And then of course you start seeing the planes with trails drop and right on the line. And yep. by the time that sh the eclipse showed up, it was just a gas cloud. <laughs> and, um, then a huge, you know, gray cloud came in, which is uh -huh. the result of the trails condensing into a weird cloud thing. And it blocked the whole thing. But it was neat because it, when it went through some thin parts of the cloud layer, you could see it really well. It was like having a filter on it. And, um, I mean, it, it was weird because you could see this black orb. And it it didn't feel like it. You, maybe it's because of the way light works with the eye. But it seemed like it was it wasn't changing appropriately with time like i would look at it this black orb yeah. would be here i would look a few seconds later and it'd be much bigger and here and it was just it was kind of neat uh the total the totality part where it got dark was really cool yeah i mean, I mean yeah <laughs> incredible. that's incredible that's just an amazing feeling to experience really 
I, w- I was at 95%, 96%. So I would like to go to like a 100% on the line, like very dark. I think that would be just awesome. Uh, um, yeah, it's, yeah. But yeah, man. Uh, nothing crazy with animals. I mean, we got birds chirping here all day, every day. So, and, you know, animals doing weird shit anyways. So <laughs> everything was fairly normal during the eclipse time of the animals. Yeah. Um, um, no big earthquakes yet. Uh, I think we was uh, fine. In the, we're in the 40 days where we can repent, apparently. Um, where like, I'm not too fond or too good with, I guess, the story of Jonah, but uh, Jonah, you know, tells the people that, you know, God's mad at you, you're a bunch of sinners, you know, change your ways, and God spares the people because of this Jonah's message. They do choose to repent. They believe Jonah. And, um, and you know, 41, I don't know if we've talked about that number before, but that's a really big number. 41 symbolizes you've made it, you've arrived. Um, it's always this 40-day this cycle of a trial. And then on 41, if you make it to 41, if you're sitting there at 41, you, you did good. You know, you made it through the 40. Hmm. Uh, so, yeah. and I, I think 41 is the it's prime. And I think it's the, I'm trying to think of the element. It's, isn't it one of those invisible ones, one of the only two elements that's stable, yet we can't see it? Uh, like Promethium and Technium or something like that. I think it's 41 and 63 or 43. Element? Is that what they're called? Yeah, what? Yeah, like the periodic table. Neobium. 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 So oh, it must be number... That cool geometry. That's pretty neat. Yeah, I must be thinking of forty-three then. Also a yeah. prime, and that—that's the I think the technium, and then sixty-one is a prometheum or something like that. The one who stole the light. You know, without Prometheus doing that, you wouldn't. Maybe you could. I guess you couldn't smoke anything. You wouldn't have any fire. But, uh, mm. You could do edibles, though, still. You could be in a cave without the stolen. Maybe that's still stolen fire, the piezoelectric light. So I guess I'm not even going to go there since it's all light. There's different kinds of light. Piezoelectric energy, though, is pretty interesting stuff. I mean, it's like kind of like invisible, like like energy from nothing. And I guess it's not nothing because there's things that have to happen for it to appear, but... Right. I mean, you can have, it's pretty much an angle. It's pretty much a pressure. It's pretty much two different types of materials interacting with each other at least. And from that, from pressure, from angle of pressure, and from type of material, things can magically happen. And that's pretty neat. That's probably what we have going on inside of our bodies and our spine. It's probably it's probably both systems, but that's probably our piezoelectric system. Is the, the spinal cavity, the pressure, the angle. You know, if you yeah. develop a poor posture, you know, you don't have good flow with your energy, and you know, bad things can start to happen to your body because your circuits all fucked up. Yeah, check um, out. There's a if you go to the holographic ideas uh, one. There's a uh, uh, animation this guy made. Super cool. Uh, it's literally the spine. Uh, Is it with the, like the gears? Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, this is exactly the same. Well, it's the same line of thinking that that was. Um, Paul videos, the um, what quad step two eight eight. They're also in holographic. Uh, he's just showing geometry, 
and then the newest video which is amazing it shows how the geometry corresponds to the this exact thing right here <laughs> the spiral the uh, golden yeah. ratio yeah you can see how the um it's neat how they've got the interlocking it's like you know the circles are spinning and then it's making the red lines turn but spiral up yeah i mean that looks like a spine man yeah absolutely maybe it's like um and that, that's kind of showing like the movement of one thing will move another thing it's like a giant uh what do they call those things where you pull the ball back and you let it go and it hits the stack of balls and it the pendulum, I guess, is probably what that is. Um, it's conserving movement, but it's still subject to entropy. Entropy will always exist and win in the end. You know, that's what life is. Life is a how much can you reduce in, in entropy? How efficient can you? I mean, you're not going to outlast entropy. Things in entropy, what is that? It's, you know, things that have a natural ability to break down unless you maintain them. You could um, hmm. you could spend. Are you not getting it? No. Uh, Amy says it's not live. She can't get it. For real. <clears throat> Wait um, for podcast. Really? Yeah. Being on my end. Oh, right. I can. I'll. I'll. I'll unload or I'll close it and reload it. All right. She's gonna try to close and reload. If anybody else is listening, yeah, type a quick comment if you can hear it. Huh. Well, I am recording. Well, we could always we post to it later. Do or now it's waiting. Waiting. Yeah. Huh. Well, shit. Oh shit. What? Damn. Did you hit the wrong button? Yeah, it's fine. What was uh? We'll post the recording afterwards. Okay. Uh, anyways, <laughs> bummer. <laughs> um, yeah, let's get into the. Um, tell me about this this blood book you got here. <laughs> the blood. The blood. I'm looking at these other holographic ideas. I haven't been in here in a minute. This is some pretty neat stuff. I'm looking at these little balls with the Fibonacci and the concentric circles and stuff. Right, yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's, that's the cool. Paul. Yeah. Look at that Celtic ring system. Right. That's so cool. So ten is the perfect circle. Wow. Oh, in a way, there is no. <laughs> Right. I wonder where 10 would be on the, let's see, on the Fibonacci spiral. That's cool. Yeah, you said, so you've got this book, and it shows blood, but it shows blood uh, pretty much with the experimental stuff inside as well. The um, Yeah, fungi. Mm-hmm. What the hell is this? I'm looking at the periodic table and swirls. Information is beautiful. Alternative periodic table. Wow. Look at silicon, dude. <laughs> Where are you at? You can see oh, this one. I'm in the holographic idea channel. Yeah. That is a really cool periodic table. You posted it on April 2nd. So yeah, yeah. Right? Look at how everything goes to hydrogen. It's like everything swirls into hydrogen. And then you've got it emits via silicon. It's like a blaster. Then you've got this black hole, which is hydrogen. Hmm. That's really cool. <clears throat> yeah, that is interesting. The, uh, then the white, you kind of have all two white, one full and one partial. <laughs> Yeah. Life. <laughs> trying to go to the trying to go to the yeah, no shit. Trying to go to the full image, but I'm too dumb. Let me try clicking on this link. Visit site. I'll uh post it in the Okay. 
I'm not on X. Oh, here it is. Wow. The chemical elements and their periodic relationships. Hmm. That is pretty amazing. Silicon's right in the middle. That is freaking awesome. So, yeah, there is two big white. Maybe that's where life is, you know? Like, maybe that's where you get some space to do your thing. Hmm. It I looks like, like the, the one. But... Go ahead. I was going to say the Lathandies, though, is like it's it's kind of cut off. Like there's a little triangle below the space. That's trippy, dude. Um, yeah, I like how you see how the on the left side it's blue and cool, the down mm -hmm. left, and then you on the yeah. uh, other side it's. I like how oh, it's that blue, creates gold. purple, though, and then the other one creates pink. Oh, yeah. So it's like a directional thing, maybe. When the, when the blue is coming down, it creates the purple, and then it feeds into the, you know, inner fire, and then maybe when it's going through its... Um, condensation or I guess not condensation evaporation phase it starts below it goes up through the pink into the creates the air that's, that's really neat and then you got your yellows kind of in the middle that's almost like the biles and the mucuses like those greens and yellows hmm. but yeah you really have a purple and a pink left and right and Check out how, so silicon and carbon is pretty cool. You can see, we, we've talked about how they're duplications of each other, um, with silicon being like a higher octave of it with much more energy potential. But you can see carbon and silicon are right next to each other, and they both have like the same shape, kind of. Yeah. But it, silicon extends out a little more. Look at that. Silicon comes out from aluminum and phosphorus into silicon. Yeah. Well, I guess with carbon, and then it's and germanium and titanium. It's sitting like right in the middle of all those. That is really cool. That, yeah. You know I like what's how it neat? Looks like bone too. You know that color. Dude, the whole inner circle is all metals: copper, cobalt, iron, manganese, chromium. Vanadium, titanium, scandium. Those are germanium, arsenic, selenium, bronium. Those are all. And then look, the silicon one, those are all gases on that ring phosphorus, sulfur. I guess sulfur can be in them. You know, these can all be in other states, but that's really neat, man. Mm -hmm. It kind of starting to make sense and then you can see we've got carbons kind of in that same group as nitrogen oxygen fluorine beryllium lithium helium so i mean that might be like our atmosphere right there like kind of living in that carbon existence and then our air our heaven is that silicon above us and then you know it's neat because they spray us with the aluminum and the beryllium and the stromium let me find stronium. Can't really see stronium. Yeah. Oh, there it is above calcium. That's really neat. That uh, tellurium always makes me think. I think about like Tesla. I think about uh, telling somebody like telepathy. It's right under oxygen and salt. Uh, it's underneath the hydrogen. It's in the orange one. Oh, oh right. Yeah, interesting. But yeah, the circles are definitely connected. Like, each ring contains similar complementing things. Like, uh, that's so cool, dude.
it looks like all the the very outer ring is all these weird elements we haven't really discovered or they're just recent so it's kind of like we're building the core out you know i bet we're missing a large chunk of information of stuff that exists in those two white areas and inside hydrogen but yeah awesome image dude let's um see what else oh this is the blood i think you posted here let me see oh wait no you posted some more what is this the physicist periodic table extended the hell is that that's layers that's cool <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sorry, man. I'm no, just like a little, little kid. Oh. Look how all the yellow connects, like the core. Right. Dude, what a cool reality. I mean, it's just so much to it. Sometimes you don't really need to know, but if you're not going to need to know, you need to trust. You got to pick one. I guess if you don't trust and you don't care about knowing, that sounds like a pretty miserable existence right there. <laughs> Very fearful, nervous, not trusting anything, not what the hell is going to happen. Hmm. Yeah, man, don't. Yeah, what do you want to get into, Todd? You want to do post eclipse? What does the eclipse mean? Uh, yeah. I can talk about oh. my eclipse. Yeah, yeah, tell me what happened. Um, yeah, I went to uh, uh, an, an area of town called, uh, area of Ohio called Fort Loramie, and uh, there was an island on the map uh, when I looked at it, and I was like, it's right at 100% totality, so I was like, okay, uh, I should try to go to the tip of that island, and uh, yeah. I thought it might be like cleared off and like paid for people just beyond the island but it definitely was not <laughs> so it turned into oh, a heck perfect. of a hike yeah um you went on yeah. an island in a lake yeah so i hiked all the way around to this like it's it's basically an island they have a small bridge to go to it and then uh yeah i hiked into the this little area uh made a little chair out of some logs <laughs> and uh yeah, it was uh, amazing. Super surreal. Wow. I got quiet. Actually, I have my video. Uh, so you were in 100% totality? Yeah, so we had like about four, just under four minutes. I think it was about 3.50. I mean, for me, it wow. felt like a very long time. <laughs> uh, oh. Yeah, I posted you know, from it, but... Cool. Did up, you get a good shot of the sun, or was there pretty good clouds? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, the clouds were ridiculous. Like, they were literally flying by while it was going on. And, I mean, mm -hmm. how you couldn't see what they were doing. <laughs> but you couldn't see the moon at all. Uh, yeah. it, it was just all, basically, you could only see the sun. I mean, when it actually happened, though, like, I mean, it was not that bad you couldn't see the stars unfortunately because you should be able to see the stars like we should have had a crystal clear day it rained the night before uh, i know but anyways well. uh yeah dude it was awesome i uh uh used uh enhanced lenses and uh it was uh seriously like Neon Genesis Evangelion, <laughs> like um the stuff I saw like uh, like when it went to Ring of Fire, so it's just like circular, um and it was incredible. It was like you could see uh, diamond sparkles like emanating from it, and then um like I started seeing <laughs> uh like this I don't know how you describe it. I mean, it's sort of like being inside a giant toroid. Like, it makes, I don't know, like, you could sense the whole world and, like, the majesty of literally millions of people staring at this thing. <laughs> and, uh, oh. but, uh, 
yeah, it, it kind of um, after a little bit, then it sort of that essence was also sort of animated for me, and like you could see these sort of lotus like things emerging that are also very reminiscent of Evangelion, um, and uh, it was just sense and uh, um, I don't even know how long what I was is looking at it. Probably a telescope. Whole, huh? Did you have a telescope or something? How did you see the Ring of Fire and stuff and uh, diamonds? Well, I was just or looking was it at just... it, but uh, yeah, I uh, you must have breaks in the clouds. I mean, uh, <laughs> I, I I vaporized something to do that. Um, okay. And I got uh, you. yeah, the. Damn, dude, that must have been. It was beautiful. I mean, uh, I was, I don't know, like, <laughs> because I was surrounded by water, there were so many different, kind of like Stranger Things a little bit. I don't, you probably haven't seen that show, but, uh, it's sort of like she has psychic powers and, uh, sort of remote view, and they visualize it where she kind of appears in like a, a blank space area. Um, yeah, um, but because you know it's nature and stuff, like everything was still there, and like everything was everything literally was like into the eclipse, like watching the eclipse, yeah, and being a part of that. Um, really, right. it was really a cool sensation, and uh, yeah, visually you amazing. I had uh, I was swimming, and um, <laughs> so I definitely with the water around you, it's quite a bit, quite a different experience for sure. Right. I don't know, the like light. water, water picks up electricity, like it absorbs energy very well. So, um, you, you probably, you know, a lot, a lot was coming in right there because you were right around a bunch of water, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, but then, uh, also the temperature change was huge. Like, I'm glad I was wearing my extra layer because, uh, I mean, Oh really? Twenty degrees at least, and the wind stopped. Like it stopped the wind. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. Uh, but uh, what's crazy too? So like, <laughs> um, as a uh, it did the ring of fire, which is the totality, and that lasts a while. And then it was like you saw these sparks, and I think I saw online that they said they were solar flare and uh then it was just like i mean audience was like erupting too at the same time which is cool because i could hear them over on the other islands and uh <laughs> it was like an explosion of light just like boom uh and for me i saw it in slow motion as well um uh -huh. and everyone's like cheering and it was uh you could feel like the you know all the light and it for me i saw this like I mean, it looked like it was a birth almost where uh yeah that lotus white stuff erupted out of the light you saw like a huge burst of red but it was sort of like um <clears throat> it was sort of like geometry uh like <laughs> again it looked kind of like the angels from evangelion <laughs> uh right it was really, really cool. And then that shape uh, sort of hovered in the air. Now, I don't. I think that could have been the clouds, though, in a way, in, you know, maybe, uh, I guess if they would have those kind of geometries, it would look kind of crystalline, right? which would give us an idea of what that stuff is, maybe. Um, and that's what right. that was, but, I mean, it still looked amazing. Uh, Dude, that's not... Dude, that was, sounds like an awesome, man. Awesome. This is uh like <clears throat> the majesty of it too, you know. <laughs> this world's uh huge, you know, gigantic and yeah. We can only see a tiny portion of it too. It's like we're sitting in the middle of it all and it's just <laughs> we're picking up Excuse such tiny percent, you know. Do you think we can only pick up a small percent because of the sun, because of this very powerful energy force that kind of like saturates everything and makes 
I mean, it's like kind of like what we're tuned into is the sun, you know, like we wake up and the sun comes up, we do our day, do our movements. And when the sun's not there, we go rest and be still. Right. Yeah. And um, <laughs> yeah. it's kind of like sun worship. I mean, you can only see what that God offers pretty much. Like we bow to the sun, so we go in sun world, you know. I don't know, yeah. man. It's awesome. Um, because most of our energy comes from the sun, like whatever that thing is, right there. There might be obviously more suns or different suns, but our main electromagnetic influence, like ninety-four percent of our energy, is that. And then there's a little bit of like deep background radiation. That's it's probably the the main wherever the hell that thing's out and our local sun's feeding off that mean what <clears throat> and it's our well the main sun is what provides the you know those background that deep low radiation you know the real long waves like the infrared pretty much is is this it could be what like a red dwarf is it could be just pulsing out these giant infrared rays that go really far um, as long waves, you know, it takes them a really long time to do one cycle to go up and down. And um, those permeate everything, you know, but it's not our main food. Our main food is whatever the sun's put now. Um, because the sun is, it's like an ion transfer, you know, just being in sunlight starts filling you up with energy. I mean, you're, it's, it's definitely like a food for you. I did found out that the air is opposite. The the air strips ions away from you. And it kind of eats the food from you, which I thought was neat. Um, I think it's the oxygen, to tell you the truth. Because if you think about places where there's no oxygen, those are the places that can preserve things for forever. I mean, they've found... Um, Remember the bog people of Florida, how they would do their their burials in the bogs in the deep swamps where it's an anaerobic environment, no oxygen down there. And they were able to recover full bodies with the hair, with, you know, even cuts and shit and bruises still like on their body, just like things that should have, shouldn't be able to see. Uh, fingernails, I mean, the whole thing preserves skin. Uh, it's pretty crazy, but the second you take it out of that anaerobic environment and expose it to oxygen, it is pretty much like a it turns to dust situation, you know, pretty quickly. But uh, I don't know. That would be a neat way to go, you know. Lower me into the swamp, please. <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, oxygen is what eats everything. Think of how. Um, Think of the, I was talking about this with Amy, think about how fire, water, and air, all three of them carry oxygen, and they're all stripping the earth, you know, they're, they're what eat at the earth, and it's, it's the oxygen and stuff that does it. <laughs> what does an ox do? It carries, it, it, it pulls things, it, you know, breaks stuff apart, pulls it apart, but it pulls a cart, that's what an ox does. Um, so it's kind of like breaking things apart all the time which is good in a way it's like a dissipation kind of uh right. it's like an ever breaking into smaller things it's like fractaling it into more quantity more space um that's where we arrive folks yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. i guess my live live fixed so it's amy who's picking it up so it's working yeah sorry about that folks cool, uh, the cool thing right that's it um yeah. are all your uh your leaves popping yeah spring just started like hello um i, I think all this rain you know Ticks are kind of bad this year. Huh. Seems like it. Yeah, there's a lot of them around here. All, Amy had politics. one. Your... Politics. Yeah, yeah, it is a, the politics year. 
it's um, every time we have these election years, we, we see a lot of our events. You know, we see the, I don't know, the dumb things going on, like we're seeing right now. Yeah. And it's probably going to be heightened this year. Um, I was trying to see, I looked up this morning, I didn't see it, but I thought they were supposed to sacrifice the red heifer on April 10th. Uh, but I don't see that they did it. So, hmm. and I was wondering if that's anything behind the Iran-Israel attacks going on, like last night and yesterday. If, you know, they, they, I'm sure the Muslims know now that the Red Heifer's sacrificed, that their Dome of the Rock's going to get destroyed. So now they're pissed off and they're in defense mode and they're, you know, now they're actually attacking because they know what comes next. And Yeah, who knows? It's, it's fucking weird religious shit. You know, cults, man. It is, yeah, hundred percent. I mean, they read it one way. There's only one kind of interpretation. That's a literal. We need an actual red heifer. And I don't know. Um, have you ever seen the old zodiacs from like the medieval period, where they've got all the different characters around the wheel, and then they've got the bull, and the bull is always red. It's this red heifer, right? Um, it's symbolizing the sacrifice that takes place. Uh, the sun consumes the red heifer in the month of, I guess, April and May during Taurus. And red is, you know, symbolic of blood, life. And we get new life at that time. You know, that's what happens in spring. We got all these baby squirrels popping out. All the leaves are coming out. It's a time of manifestation. Yeah. So, and you can't have this without the sacrifice of the bull, the red, the, you know, the red bull, right? Gives you wings, lets you fly, um, which is fitting because then you go into mutable air, learning to fly, Gemini. And uh, from there, getting all feely and sensational in Cancer. And then it's time to go be egoic, some thick fire. Yeah, man. It's all there. Right. The 12 cranial nerves, probably the 13, probably the vagus nerves, probably number 13, something going up the center. Just like Ophucus is our, supposed to be the 13th sign. And the reason you can't go to the 13th floor in a building is because you're in the 13th shaft. 13 is a shaft. 13 is not a floor. It's a vertical vault. It's not a horizontal space. It's a vertical space connecting all the horizontal spaces right up the center, spine. Yep. Hmm. Which is also symbolized by the letter Q. Uh, the Q shows the, the bridge between the inner and the outer going over the circle of life. You know, that's how you have to go through the circle of life. You have to go through the what they call death to get back. It's like a, it's like a portal. You know, the DMT is going to release when you die, and you got to go back into, you know, bliss. And you came from it. You know, you died spiritually to be born here. Death and rebirth are just transfers. You know, they're just changeovers. It's like in Fight Club. It's when they. <laughs> it's when the projector splices the, you know, the the reel, puts a new script in, and hmm. debate. You know, do we have free will? Is this all, you know, planned? And uh, I think it's both. You know, I think there's definitely a script that you're operating on that you chose for yourself that you said yes to but i think it's a live edit situation you know you can you can change your choices as you go based upon more information that you now have and um this whole thing is an edit system right i mean this is how you come you know, come to work on your soul you're coming to work on what you're attracted to what you're what you what you desire you're working on your electricity you're working on your magnetism you know, you're working on, I mean, because what you're attracted to is really closely tied to that intense system. You know, if you're attracted to helping people and being compassionate and whatnot, uh, then you are, 
that's you're intending to do that when you do actions for others you know you're not doing it to take advantage you're not doing it to get one up you're you're doing it just to help your your fellow being and um yeah easy easy peasy easy peasy but i mean wouldn't it be horrible if you couldn't adjust those things like you know if you were a blank slate and all of a sudden you started desiring something and then you could never change that you're going to desire that for the rest of your eternal existence and there's no adjusting it that would be horrible (laughs) you know um and i think that's jupiter desire because they say beware of jupiter's gifts you know careful about what you wish for careful what you desire because right. you're when you desire something you're setting up that circuitry right you're allowing for that to manifest in your life you're that's the first step you got to desire it that's part about being here on earth you have to want to be here if the second that you're secretly inside that you don't want to be here anymore and you think this is fucking dumb and you want to leave you're going to get hit by a bus or something you know i mean you'll you'll get out of here because you're desiring to get out of here. Uh... that's all you have to do uh... What do you got there? <laughs> <laughs> went, went to rated R real quick. No, I mean, it's the placebo. It's the, but the placebo isn't just a, um, a thought system. Placebo extends into feelings, desires, you know, the whole thing is set up and structured around, you know, the circuit that you're building isn't just one component coming in. It's It's all of these components dancing with each other to give you this Oh, wow, that's a beautiful thing. It does. Hmm. Um, yeah. but, Meandering. Uh, so, uh, the eclipse was awesome. Uh, powerful. Uh, won't be another one for quite a while. Yeah, I mean, you're pretty pretty safe in Ohio, too. That's why they call it the high-O. You know, I mean, you're not going to... You know, when the Madrid pops coming up here, I mean, you're, you're going to be fine. You're going to be sitting on... You're only going to have to go like an hour to get to the beach at that point. <laughs> Which on the East Coast? Oh, you'd probably go East or West. I mean, I think it would be on your, your Western side. Like the um, the Ohio would turn into like a brackish water system with the gulf extending up getting skinnier and skinnier as it goes up the mountain because the earth isn't round uh, the earth is a mound and <laughs> as, the, yeah. as the water you know as you're tracing up the mound the paths you know, get skinnier and deeper but as you get to the base of the mound it spreads out gets shallower figure that one out all by myself um yeah i uh too felt that the uh um if if they hadn't been spraying experience um you would have been able to see uh the whole like a twilight version of the sky very cool Mm -hmm. and i couldn't tell did you see that star like there was like a very distinct star um sort of on the lower uh and i don't know it looked like it was below like five o'clock or something yeah no, I mean it was behind a huge cloud system at the time. The whole fucking thing is pretty irritated. Yeah, yeah. They and were... I wasn't couldn't see through the cloud. I wasn't vaping nothing, you know. Yeah, we uh really lucked out. Cause kind of. I mean, yeah, <laughs> they couldn't block it out that much. <laughs> uh, it was right. like f you. <laughs> Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's, um, it's just a real experience. I'll I'll be targeting them in the future, and if I can drive a few hours or so to get to one, then I'm I'll be doing it. I really like it. I didn't drive this time just because I didn't 
I was going to go, but then I chose not to just because of the clouds. Like I didn't want to go all the way two, three hours just to go see clouds where I could be in clouds myself. But I thought I would actually <laughs> get lucky. No clouds where I was at, just a little off the line. But no. someone had money to spend that day. I know, huh? Dumping all that. I don't know where they get all the aluminum and shit to do that. I mean, they're going to find like a whole layers of those metals. Like they'll be going through the core earth soil samples. And wow, 2,000 years ago, they just got all these weird aluminum and everything, strontium. And I wonder what this is all doing here in this set of samples. Or the ice core samples or whatever. But I think it's just a testament to how strong we are, too. I mean, we can be just battered with shit. Just like the um, the field, the big corn field that they spray all these fertilizers on. And there's this, you know, 50 different types of pesticide, and insect, all these different things. But there's still this one big ass green thing growing out there flourishing right in the middle. Nothing around it. Not a care in the world. Just soaking in the sun, you know? Great. Yeah, man. It's us. It can get lonely and a little windy, but... I mean... You just gotta keep placebo and good stuff inside. That's all. <laughs> Great. That's it, folks. Make the best of it. Uh, uh, definitely, uh, the next one the is... The are about to pop, too, I think. Coming, they're supposed to be right around this time. Yeah. I haven't I think heard you guys yet. Are... Dude, I bet. Uh, yeah, you'll... yeah, it's supposed to be real soon. Morels are popping right now, too. Um... So, yeah, if anybody's listening in the Ohio Valley area or really any, anywhere in the eastern U.S., it's that time. Get out in the woods and look for the brain-shaped mushrooms and eat them. Say everything. It's like 100 bucks a pound. Wow. That's what they sell them for. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. crazy. Must be good. Yeah, they are. They're. It's kind of weird. They kind of taste like a... A meat, like it's like a mushroom that tastes like a steak, almost a little bit. It's really odd. I love sautéing a little butter, onion, pretty good. Oh. I'd still have a um, about four years, five years ago, there was a cicada hatch, and I collected a bunch of the, I don't know, cicadas because I had read that the Chinese would save different broods for medicine. It was, it was like very rare medicine that you'd only get once every couple hundred years because the there's two different hatch patterns, a 13 and a 17 year one, but you're not always getting the same one from 13 or 17 years ago. I mean, the one we're getting this year is supposed to be 18, 10, and 11. Last time this particular brood popped, which is right around the New Madrid pop. So it's kind of kind of a neat correlation, but the last time these things came out, there was earth huge earthquakes. So I don't know. That would be pretty neat, though, if there was. A, I'm sure there's some kind of medicinal quality to them. They would keep them in these gold. Almost looks like this gold box. You open it up, and it's like pill trays. There's all these little like they would grind the carcasses down into a dust and they would have all these different dust flavors pretty much all these different broods and um yeah i mean and that's all you get of that one medicine for the next 200 years so oh, better wow. use it wisely great mm -hmm. all right pretty cool system. i mean that's i don't know of any other thing that has a it's like i mean think of that if in a thousand years they they pop out five times. I mean, do you think the eclipse is like almost like a signal for them? It's almost well, like a signal think... to the hive mind of bugs. 
yeah, I think uh, look at the word cicada. You know, look at circadian rhythm. I mean, that's just what natural rhythms, uh, like your heart rhythm and your body's rhythm, that it, you know, your heartbeat and all this stuff. And uh, right. I mean, that's some kind of nature heartbeat thing or some kind of the beat of nature, some kind of, I'm sure there's plenty of messages in there. I mean, I'm going to be collecting some. They're not going to be super in my area, but they're all around me. Um, but they're fascinating, dude. The colors and the size of them, the noises they make. Uh, what if they live for just a couple of weeks and they just die everywhere? <laughs> dude, I don't know. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> They'll, they'll last I mean, for a while. I mean, they obviously have to lay eggs so they can come up again in 200 years, but like, it's what a weird process, you know? And are they just in the ground? Exactly. Or are they in the... That's what I was thinking. Like, are they. What are they. <laughs> well, you, where are they? I don't know. If you think of, uh, I guess, reincarnation, like, uh, you know, some. Well, I mm -hmm. guess for the bug system. What do they do? Do they just leave and they die? Or Maybe they come in on the, uh, they might come in on the electricity. You know, I, I swear sometimes, uh, like, you'll have no bugs when it's cold, and then you'll get a few hot days, and there's mosquitoes and flies. It's like, where the fuck did you come from? <laughs> Somebody just pop in, is that Mike? Yeah, yeah, what's up, guys? Hey, Mike. Welcome. Good to hear you, brother. A bit late. Forgot all about it. Uh, I forgot you. You're good. <laughs> I remembered like 10 minutes before. Well, I didn't remember any. You reminded me. Happy 11 12. <laughs> this was good. How was Solar Eclipse for you guys? Well, yeah, it was pretty, pretty surreal. Um, awesome experience. I, I, just, I don't see how everybody. We have such a demonization of it through our history and you know there's just don't look at the sun and there's this fear around it and it just it feels like a beautiful event like oh yeah it, it was like a huge online one. let me tell you that <laughs> yeah you probably camera, yeah you had to watch it online capture it for real though like, yeah, you, maybe a 360 camera would be a little closer but like you gotta feel that temp drop 20 degrees <laughs> yeah the wind stopping. <laughs> yeah, I, I was I was there for a partial eclipse in the Netherlands in I think it was ninety eight or ninety nine. Nice. And even that, even that was noticeable. Like with oh, the yeah. temperature drop and and the wind, all the animals becoming quiet all of a sudden. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I saw a bunch of crows flying like they were going home for the day, like to their nest area or whatever. It's pretty neat. They sighted an eagle. I, don't know. I think it was a brown eagle or a hawk, maybe a brown hawk. But I had one fly over me at like well, well after totality. Yeah. Yeah. Like whoa. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah. That's pretty. I think you got uh, the same patterns coming for you guys in seven years, I think, Mike, like 20, 29, 20, 30. Yeah, you're going to get the um, the west to east one, and then you're going to get the south to north one, making the X. Let me see. Yeah, it's supposed to be 666 days, something like that, or, or six years, six months, 66 days, some shit like that from this one. Oh, right. I have to go to Spain to Mike's in uh, 2026. Is that where it's going to be? Yeah. Yeah, because in, in the Netherlands, um, I'll be long gone. 2135. <laughs> yeah. How how far is Spain from you? Like seven, eight hours? It, it's, yeah, it's it's. I think it's about the same distance as, uh, say, Seattle to L.A. Damn, that's a pretty good haul. I, I could be mistaken though. Let me see. What's the um? If you go north, can you hit the ocean right there, or like what is that? The Baltic Sea. What's up there? If I go north, I keep. Uh, if I keep heading north, I just hit the North Pole. I think. 
but uh, well, north of the Netherlands, you've got uh, Norway, Sweden, Finland. So you've got you got the good shit right above you, right there. Then That's I mean, cold, it gets, <laughs> Finland's really majestic. You know, the forests, the mountains, the I mean, it's a really beautiful place. Like Finland, Poland, Sweden, all those northern European areas. It is beautiful. That that I have to agree. It. You have the go the Gulf Stream going up right through there above you to the north. Yeah, yeah. Gulf Stream comes straight through the uh, English Channel. Damn, that's cool. And it goes, I think, into like the Finland Bay or some kind of bay up there. Yeah, Botnik Gulf into the what they call the East Sea, I think. What do they call this thing in in, in international? Yeah, that's supposed to be the um, the only place in the north that survived Baltic. the yeah the Baltic. Yeah, the, that's supposed to be the only only little circle, only Gulf that survived the ice pretty much because the warm water kept things thawed in that area, and the Gulf Stream and whatnot. When I guess the glaciers retreated far south. I mean, if any of that's even true, seems some of it's true though. We got glacial scars. Uh, we've but got. Can... Back in those days, uh, if you take the Ice Age into consideration, um, the North Sea wasn't a sea as such. Okay. That was all land. It was Dogger's Ooh. Land. Dogger's Land? Yeah. Oh, cool. So that was um, all. It was like frozen tundra. Frozen tundra, indeed. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, at that point in time, one was capable of walking from the Netherlands to the UK. Okay. And um, the, um, the Baltic the Sea stream... was a sea as such, but um, it, it ended in a sort of a big river that ran along the coast of Norway into the Atlantic. Hmm. Sure. At least... If we have to yeah. believe all of these old maps were presented with, I mean, <laughs> could have been like an underground warm river under the ice, maybe. That would have been would be pretty badass, actually. Yeah, I'm going to go to Florida. I'm taking the uh, warm river ice tunnel. Yeah, that'd, be... <laughs> that'd be great, right? That would be just awesome. Absolutely awesome. A drive from Seattle to LA is 1,827 kilometers. And from Amsterdam to Spain is 1,746. Yeah, right there then. So, Jeez. yeah, I was pretty spot on with that distance. Yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's more than eight hours then. It's, yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. It's a, it's a good, good long drive with a, with a car, they reckon it's 18 to 21 hours, depending on yeah, probably your probably slow for congestion, too. Like, not as many just straight highway stretches for eight hours in a row. Nah, there's plenty, plenty, plenty of highway networks that, uh... Well, you guys got the Autobahn through Germany. Is it, is it true you can just go whatever you want on that road? Nah, it's only, it's only sections of Germany where you can go as fast as you want. Oh. Uh -huh. Kind of like the natural selection highway. Do what you want here. Yeah, but those, those uh, in in Germany, they are really efficient with like their highways. Like people keep to the right side of the road. In America, you keep to your lane, right? I mean, you can pass on the right, and you can pass on the left. Doesn't matter. Yeah, you just stay where you're at, so you don't get rear-ended. That's it, right? You stay your lane in Europe. Yeah. Stay, stay to the right. Apart from in England, where you stay to the left. Jeez. <laughs> they drive the other side of the road. There. Is England the only one that does the opposite side of the road, or is it all Europe? Nah, in Europe, Europe, uh, everybody drives on the left. Uh, sorry, on the right side. Only in the UK and Ireland. No shit. Yeah. I think that was. Do they drive on the left side of the road? 
Now, that would be hard for somebody living close to England, having to go back and forth for work and travel and, or, you know, home and work and just... You get, you get used to it. I, truck drivers have the oversight, so it really doesn't matter where you sit. You look over everything anyways. Yeah, that's true. Uh, the only thing hard on, uh, like, a, a right-hand drive car is passing in a left-hand system. Other than that, it's all good. Oh, yeah, and drive throughs <laughs> Yeah, I can see dri drive throughs would suck, huh? Yeah. Gonna freaking, I'll be right there. <laughs> hey, let me let me reach over. <laughs> <laughs> but other Still than that, Europe Europe is 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 uh, all left hand. Okay, fair enough. So we've got think, a um I think the only place where they where they have stuff like that happen from country to country is Africa. Oh really? Like where in Africa you in Africa you can literally go from one country driving on the left hand side to another country, you have to drive on the right hand side. Yeah. Lane switch and cross yep. the border. <laughs> Uh, let's go see. We got any Astro in the delineation. Let's see here. We got some Nikki Davenport the other day. It was like a big old kite. We have a Jupiter Uranus conjunction happening right now in Taurus, which is pretty cool. Very close to Al Ghul, which is all gold and also. Alcohol. Would, yeah, alcohol. That's correct. Uh, spirits. And um, yeah, Al Ghul's the king of solidification. And this thing, Earth Grand Trine, represents the principle of solidification and organizing structure. Huh. Making it work. The kite tail, Saturn, Mars, and Pisces, bringing soothing and healing. I, I can say Saturn, Mars, Pisces conjunction. That's kind of. I see that as a little tough energy. Anytime Saturn's in a water sign, I see that as difficult for me, at least. Um, the one on April 12th, World Chaos posted it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The string of the kite, so your grounding is coming from, looks like, fourth house, Scorpio, uh, Virgo. Okay. So mutable earth. We've got Yeah, that one end of the kite, man. We've got is that Lilith, Jupiter, and Uranus all right together there. So I see a Jupiter Uranus conjunction. It's a so Uranus has changed, Jupiter's growth, expansion. So positive you know, Jupiter's also positive, like positive growth, positive change things like that you know um if it was a saturn uranus conjunction you, you get a restrictive change you know a possible taking taking something away and, and causing a change would be like restricting uh but with a jupiter uranus conjunction you know positive change and it's in fixed earth so maybe a positive change like in you know stubborn bowl mentality you know maybe you're going to be stubborn in a new way uh, maybe a more positive way you're going to stand for something etc and but yeah that's coming up on uh, uh just i always am looking at that 26 degree tourist spot for al ghul man that's just such a powerhouse spot right there i mean that's the shield that or the head that you know, Medusa's head that Perseus holds in the left hand that can turn stuff to stone. Or it can free it from stone as well. It can also provide it with light. It can restore things from stone. It's Moses going up and bringing water forth from the stone. Right there in the desert. You know. Because um, stones can absorb water. What do we got here? Neobium is 41. Oh, yeah, we were looking at the first thing. Technium is 
43. NB Neo Bio. Crystal structure is neat. Body Physical centered. state. Physical state appears at 68 degrees Fahrenheit. It likes the nice operating temperatures. It's a transition metal, solid, weakly acidic, body centered cubic. Hmm. Is that what episode we're on? Yeah. Nice, that's an 11. <laughs> Six five. Do they even have that? I mean, it's got a turbium. Turbium. <laughs> Interesting. I just hear one of your. Can you have a cow? Not just one. Oh, nice. Okay, that was Mike's cat. Uh, he's somewhat annoyed over the fact that he's not yet getting food, but that's in half an hour. <laughs> yeah, not your time yet, buddy. Look at uh, the crystal structure of Turbium. A cube. Wow. Hexagonal. Weekly basic. So it's on the alkaline side. Solid. Rare earth. So it's a rare earth. Terbium. And a lanithoid element. So it must be in that weird top swirl on the other one. Another 68 degree one. What do you know? They all really like that 68 degrees. Cup of water, Pete. Where's your cup? There we go. A pretty. Uh, yeah. The she posted. Not as many. I'm gonna pull up a uh. Pull up a chart here. We'll take a quick look. See where the. Energies are astro charts. There we go. No, wrong site. Get out of there. There we go. My name is today. And today's date, today's my six year or our six year anniversary, 414. Is it? Congratulations, oh, yeah. dude. Six whole years. And we're going to do 11. Just an eternity to go. All right, 11 a.m. Damn, everything besides the moon is above the horizon. And really, it's all centered in, like, houses 11 through 9. It's really stacked. We got some stelliums happening here. Let me throw this in the delineatory here. All right, so let's look at what we got going on right, right now. So the moon is about to be on the ascendant, at least to where I'm at, which is pretty cool. Looks like it's sitting in Cancer. It's about a, um, it's hitting its first quarter coming up here. And it's making trines to Mars, to the MC. MC is super stretched out to the right. Which you're going to always see that around this time of year, and it's going to keep bending to the right uh, the more we approach June 21st. And it just shows that we have, you know, we're at the height of light. So 
uh, the center of our sky, the MC, is ever approaching the west during this time of year, we get more light. Um, as we hit the fall, uh, it, well, actually, as we hit June 21st, it'll be all the way to the right, and then June 22nd, it'll start to come back uh, towards the left and shorten our window. Um, let's see here. We already know about the Uranus Jupiter conjunction in Taurus. Looks like it's sextiling Mars MC, which is pretty cool. Um, sextile is a very Venusian angle of um, you know, benefit, good positive energy. Um, it shows maybe your action, your Mars and Pisces, so maybe your your action and your feelings um, will, you know, it's 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 sexing with that change in your growth, you know, that change in your stubbornness. Maybe you're having um, new feelings that are realigning some of your stubbornness potentially. Uh, we've got right up in, like we've got a Sharon. Let's look at this, dude. Something's conjunct. I think the sun is exactly conjunct Mercury. Let me go look at that. Sun, 25 degrees Aries. Mercury, 20 degrees Aries. Okay. So what is conjunct over there? Sharon is conjunct Mercury. So the wounded healer is at 19 degrees, 45 minutes Aries. And Mercury's at 20 degrees Aries. Mercury's retro. Mercury has Chiron on it. And let's see if anything's combusted. A combustion occurs when something sits in between Mercury and the Sun, which it looks like. I guess we just have Chiron there. Let's see if that's right. Yep. Sun 25 degrees Aries. Actually, Mercury, 20 degrees Aries, Chiron, 19, so almost. Um, with Mercury on your Chiron and retrograde, that's it's kind of a rough energy right there. That's a tough one. You might, um, you might see a lot of difficulties in electronics, communications. You, know, you might feel like you're going backwards trying to do shit. Um Definitely a think outside the box way of moving forward with that could, you know, could hurt, cause pain. It could be an unavoidable pain. Uh, Sharon's there. Uh, you're just careful with words right now. You know, it, it, it definitely you could say things that are kind of hypocritical that you don't do yourself, but you're asking of others. Um, that energy is also squaring. Pluto, so it's challenging your moral tendencies, which is over in the almost the seventh house of so your area of relationships. So, um, yeah, that's what we do with Mercury. We communicate, and you have to communicate with another being, which is your relationship. So, it could be challenging to your moral setting inside of you. Uh, we've got pretty much Saturn Mars conjunction which is pretty cool, right on the MC, too. So um, very much the fruits right now, The what we're receiving, what we're being gifted, what we've worked hard for. Um, the return of our investment, per se, is going to be that Mars-Saturn conjunction in Pisces. It's very much birthing things for us. Could be a birthing pain um, type thing, too. Uh, it's sitting in that Pisces area. So, I mean, Pisces is a tough, tough energy. It's very world consciousness, too. The 12th house is the entire thing all wrapped up in one. Um, so you have world action right now, or like kind of like cathartic world feeling events, kind of like your 9-11, where it caused the entire world to feel a certain way. Um you know, you, you could see some of that. You could see events going on that caused the world to come together with their feelings. Um, you've got... 
Yeah, I'm really looking at that Mars, Pisces, action and feelings. Or movement of feelings. Mars is movement as well. It could be shown, too, to not restrict your, your feelings because they could easily become restricted right now. You could be really overtaken by certain feelings with Saturn sitting there, you know, right on that area. Looks like it's in the Leviathan area as well. Um, so could be some actions into, you know, your your desires that are disdain, that are disgusting. You know, you could be participating in some of those because your Mars is, you know, over your Leviathan. You know, that which consumes you is your Leviathan. That which overtakes your desire system and swallows you up and consumes you whole is, is essentially right there. Um, I think maybe a Neptune. No, I was going to say Neptune conjunct Venus. That's pretty cool. Neptune 28 Pisces. So Neptune's in that area too. So, you know, illusion, imaginary. Um, your intuition, you know, which is not imaginary and illusion. You can get some good info from your intuition. Kind of that double-edged cord, though. And let's see what else we get. Yeah. That's about all I got right now on this. Everything's packed, man. All of our energy is sitting, all of our wandering stars are sitting in between Taurus and Pisces. So Taurus, Aries, Pisces are just packed right now. And in about three days, the moon's going to be in there too. So everything will pretty much be in there except for Pluto, which is late half or uh, yeah, early Aquarius. It shows Pluto is now sitting two degrees Aquarius. Remember when just felt like the other day Pluto went into Aquarius? Um, that's how we get our new, um, new generations of children, right? We say you're generation X, you're a millennial, you're this or that. Well, that's when Pluto sign right there. It's not always the same 14 or 17 years to move through a sign. So the fact that Pluto has already moved two degrees into Aquarius is, it seems fast because Pluto moves really slow. I mean, if it takes Pluto 100 and, oh wait, no, if it takes Pluto 14 or 17 years to move through a sign and 200 and something years to go around the Zodiac, you know, it takes a long time then to move one degree. So the fact that we're already two degrees is pretty, pretty fast. Um, and I think what will happen is Pluto is actually going to be retroing back into Capricorn to finish up some kind of tie up some loose ends type energy and then it's going to be in Aquarius for the next 14 years or so. So you're kind of, it's neat. That means you can go through a time like a uh, linear time and you can go from generation X to millennial to generation X. Like you can have it mixed, you know, because Pluto is going back and forth. It's retroing back into the sign it was in. So we're going to get some more last minute, you know, Gen Xers here until we move into just Millennials coming. Kind of, kind of neat. I was that kind of shit happening with um, my my Pluto is at 29 degrees Libra, so it was in Scorpio and it was birthing, I guess your Millennials or your let me think here. Yeah, Millennials. So it, it was in Gen X. And it had just barely moved into the millennial shit because it works backwards through. So it goes in backwards into Libra, it works down into Virgo towards Virgo. And that's 83. I was, let me see where that's at. 83 is eight years of the millennial. Years of the millennial. There it is. Good old Wikipedia. Use the early 80s as the starting birth years and the mid 90s to early 2000s as the ending birth years. With the generation typically being defined as people born from 81 to 96. 
most millennials are children of the baby boomers and our older generation X and matern millennials are all from the parents of generation alpha. Let's go see what generation alpha is. Oh yeah, researchers use the early 2010s. My, yeah, I have a kid born in 04 and 2010 as starting birth years and mid to late 2020s as ending, which is where we're at right now. So generation alpha is ending. And where are we going next? What's the next generation? Uh, <clears throat> I don't know what the boomer. Gen Z went from like 2000 to 2012 ish to 2010, 2012. Uh, let's see. Generation Alpha are the youngest people alive today. What's the next generation? What's the. Is it Beta? Is it Omega? Uh, I'll follow me. Beta. Let's... Generation Beta will be born from 2025 to 2039. No way. So, and that's when Pluto's going to be in Aquarius. No shit. They Alpha call the silent generation Gen Z. And millennials uh, are like the generation Y? Huh. Yeah. And then the Generation X are called 13ers? Uh, never heard of them. <laughs> How are they 13? <laughs> oh, I because they're that. 13 years and it's like it's the GI generation. 1900 to 1924 and then the silent generation 25 to 45 so right now the 2000 to present is the new silent generation or gen z you know generation y as far as i'm concerned that's the isn't that the male the y chromosome yeah millennials from 1980 to 1994 Okay. Because XX is female, right? Two X's. And then X, XY is male, right? Let me see if that's right. XX is... Or does Y have this? Let's see. The XY sec determination... Okay, XX is female. Yep. So the Y, anytime you get the Y, that's male. So there it is, man. Male came in 1984. Yeah. But why? Cosmic male. I mean, because we, we we already got what the female has. We have an X. We got an X and a Y. I mean, she got two X's. I mean, right. it's funny, though. We're always asking the king. That's why asking is a word and <laughs> we shouldn't have the why because we're not the ones asking why we get maybe they ask why maybe the female ask why to the why 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 and then x means no so why not <laughs> why not yeah yeah well she doesn't have the why why not so fucking a Females love asking questions. I mean, we had to put something here to answer them. It would have been pretty mean. Curiosity killed the cat. Which is XX. You know, a smiley face with XX is like a dead smiley face. <laughs> yes. All right, I'm, gonna, I'm being mean to one and I better stop. Might just be getting hangry. Maybe I need some peanut butter and crackers. Uh, hangry. I like. I like that term. Crackers. Just a bunch of crackers. Plug it in a little bit of the gematria. We got some good ones. Nice. Let's see. Got a couple of the elements I haven't even heard of before. I feel like every time I look at an element, look at the number, I'm like, oh, I've never even seen this element. 
fucking. Yeah, why is there so many of them anyway? Right? It's really all this hydrogen. <laughs> right. Yeah, that, Just uh, different hydrogen. That other drawing of it, quite good. Makes me think of the Earth as probably the same operation. Probably. That's probably where they know to go extract certain minerals. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. I bet you could. I bet you could put the zodiac on that down too. Oh, totally. Oh, sorry. Okay. Here's out of the. Trying to determine why Amy opened up a bag of jelly beans when we already had a bag open. <laughs> and, uh, oh. I'm realizing she, she took all the orange ones out. And the green. Oh, oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Hey. On our anniversary. All right, let's see what we got for numbers. Yeah, some good ones. 101 Millennial. Okay. 101 Turbium. Oh, yeah, how crazy. Wow, that's and 101 is the Matrix number. So far. Mm -hmm. We're in the Matrix. Oh, look at Turbium 88. Oh, we got Radium and we got the 333. Got a 31 matching millennials. <laughs> Have millennials what? hit 65 and now they're retiring? <laughs> <laughs> we got a 666 uh, on. Spring has sprung. On spring has sprung. Wow. And a prime. It's funny because it's not a prime number. <laughs> Yeah, right? Two times, yeah, 333. Uh, I like Field, too. Look how Field, all all of Field's version has, like, her geometry. Yeah. Look at all those 3553s in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. Matching 43. There's a lot of 43s and 34s, too. 43 is the, uh, the technium. Oh, yeah, that's on here. That has uh, 11, 118, and 113. A lot of 42. Mm -hmm. Oh. We got a 1444 in the squares. Turbium. I oh, just feather got an 81. Well, the, the pH spell. But it matches the feather with the F spelling of the 36. <laughs> and isn't that um like lead? Light as a feather? Interesting. <laughs> Some twenty twos matching up. Field, ring, angle, oh. moon, medium. Two eleven on field. Amy's birthday. Ace of spades. Seventeen on asking, seventeen on angle. Uh, 
XY versus XX. That's neat. Look at how they're one off of each other. Hmm. That's neat. It's like they're one off of each other. I guess because it adds one more letter value spot. Right. Angle and field, 21-21. With the 90s done. In the star, so. Yeah, like, uh, when flips, uh, starting to like it kind of looked like it was emerging out of the ring of fire, uh, but that's what mm -hmm. it looked like. Like fields, massive. See them. You gotta add black sun, eclipse, diamond, and ring of fire. A lot going on. <laughs> <laughs> 364. One shy of 365. Millennials. Okay. 3131 Millennials Tribune. Mm -hmm. I did eat all the orange and green and mm -hmm. I don't like getting the flavor. You don't? No. Are you going to go? No, we're still good. I'm just eating the peanut butter. I don't want to get hangry. Yeah, full carbs? Yeah. <laughs> you go find my cards. Want to pull one of these? Uh -huh. I hear hangry and I think of that wing stop clip. You guys see that? It's not. There's this girl that gets in a in, in in a car and she is just screaming at everybody that she wants <laughs> to have wing stop because she's worked for ten hours straight or something. I understand. All right. Ten whole hours. Um. Let's jump on some medicine cards here. Oh, go get a deck. Uh, as a request with cards or something. Drop them. Anyone. Uh, or you can also share a card. Oh. BRB. Yeah. All right. I'll be right back. Get the peanut butter out of my mouth. These, these cats are becoming. Oh, it's time to eat. For the kitties. Speeding time. <laughs> All right, we're going to pull a medicine card for Amy. We're going to pull a medicine card for everybody else. We're going to see what her spirit animal is, maybe. And we'll see what our spirit animal is right now. It's 
let me, uh, and then we can think of what I'm in a fight. That sounds good. All right, so Amy's going to get an opossum. We should be able to destroy that. And uh, shit, we got a dragonfly. Uh, I think the opossum's going to win that battle. Maybe. Take a picture. So we pulled a uh, possum and a dragonfly. Start with the opossum here. That was the one for Amy. Possums are kind of neat. First thing they can do that's pretty cool is they can play dead. I mean, that saves their life, playing dead. Pretty neat tactic. Just to lay motionless like you're dead on the ground, and nobody wants to mess with a dead opossum. So it's just left there, and he gets up and lives. Uh, they hang upside down. Pretty neat. They're out at night, nocturnal. That's very true of Mammy. She's... Pretty much not been going to bed before midnight. Can't sleep. I've been telling her it's the eclipse energy type stuff. Um, man, they always get hit by cars. I see a lot of dead opossums in the road, and I feel horrible for their species. They're not very fast, so they can't get across the road very quick. Is it a bit like rabbit in the headlight type of deal? Like if they get... Caught on I think so. Stop moving. It's yeah, I mean that that light just kind of like, oh, what's this? Then yeah, boom. that's sad. That is. Let me go get the little uh, little booklet here. We'll see what they're saying in detail about the opossum. They always hang out in a posse too. Like there's always a couple of them. It seems like. Please. Awesome. Dragonfly. Let me see. Oh, nice. I got like 10,000 books on the shelf, and I just happened to look for see the medicine card book. Take it. That is one awesome bookshelf. All right, so I'm going to read a possum real quick here. And we'll get into Dragonfly. Alright, awesome. 20. Alright, almost there. Here we go. A possum's greatest form of protection is to play dead. Well, first thing I noticed, too. In doing this, the opossum confuses many a predator into believing that the game is over. Oftentimes, the confused rival walks away or looks the other direction for a moment, and the opossum runs to safety. Opossum medicine uses a great deal of strategy. If all else fails, opossums play dead. It has the ability to fight with its claws and teeth, but it rarely uses this form of protection. Instead, the supreme strategy of diversion is constantly employed when things get a little too hard to handle. A possum has developed an act that would receive an Academy Award in the Animal Kingdom. The musk of the death is oh, the musk of a death scent is excreted at will, adding to the master play that sends enemies on many trails. So it actually puts a smell out like it's dead. Fucking hell. If a possum has turned up in your cards, you are being asked to use strategy. It's a present situation. So, Amy, work on your strategy. And let's see, oftentimes, uh, oh, wait, blah, 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 blah. rely upon your instincts for the best way out of a tight corner. If you have to pretend to be apathetic or unafraid, do it. Oftentimes, if you refuse to struggle or show that hurtful words bother you, your conqueror will see no further fun in the game. 
warriors have used possum medicine for centuries, playing dead when the enemy nears them and lingers them. And in a flash, when the enemy is least expecting it, the war cry is heard. The fright of this serves to further confuse the unsuspecting opposition. Victory is sweet when the strategy is one of mental as well as physical prowess. Possum may be relaying to you that you are to expect the unexpected and be clever in achieving your victory. This could be a victory over a bothersome salesman or a noisy neighbor. In essence, a possum is beckoning you to use your brain, your sense of drama and surprise to leap over some barrier to your progress. Cool. All right, let's go to Dragonfly. Let's talk about what we see in the Dragonfly. Um, so Dragonflies are pretty majestic. They are very ancient, too, like one of the oldest things that haven't changed through the course of time, apparently. Hmm. Um, they, their wings are pretty incredible, too. I mean, their wings are like etheric hmm. objects. Like, they're not even real. They're just these magical things that, I don't know. And all over Earth, right? There's dragonflies yeah. all over Earth. Some dragonflies, believe it or not, are born underwater and they live as a like fish thing for their first course of their life, only to emerge from the water and they shed their fish skin and they when they shed that underneath is the wings and then they fucking start flying. I mean that's really cool. I mean that's awesome. It's got the number twenty seven, uh, which is let's see here, I think it's at a Nine times three, so it's not a prime number, but it's nine times three. That's cool. Um, the way that they have sex is cool, too. They attach to each other for a long time, and they even fly around fucking. Like, I, that's probably head. where I could give a flying fuck came from, I imagine. <laughs> by, um, by the head, right? Yeah, There's yeah. There's... That, yeah, like the tail goes to the head of the other one. What? Yeah. <laughs> so weird um yeah and there's based on the type of the dragonfly they like they choose you know it's it's weird they can go to both rounds they can go underwater they can go in the air they can be a right in the middle on the earth i mean they can pretty much go everywhere except the fire which is pretty awesome uh, let's see what the book's got Dragonfly medicine is of the dream time and the illusionary facade we accept as physical reality. The iridescence of dragonfly's wings remind us of the colors not found in our everyday experience. Dragonfly's shifting of color, energy, form, and movement explodes into the mind of the observer, bringing vague memories of a time or place where magic reigned. Some legends say that the dragonfly was once dragon, and that dragon had scales like dragonfly wings, Dragon was full of wisdom and flew through the night, bringing light with its fiery breath. The breath of the dragon brought forth the art of magic and the illusion of changing form. Then dragon got caught in its own facade. Coyote tricked dragon into changing form, and the shape of its new body became like dragonflies. In accepting the challenge to prove its power and magical powers, dragon lost its power. Dragonfly and the essence of the winds of change, the messages of wisdom and enlightenment, and the communications from the elemental world. This elemental world is made up of tiny spirits of plants and of the elements air, earth, fire, and water. In essence, this world is full of nature spirits. If dragonfly has flown into your carts today, you may have forgotten to water your plants. <laughs> On another level, you may need to give thanks to the foods you eat for sustaining your body. I always, every time I, well, I should say always, I try to, every single time I put something in my mouth, like water, except for air, but water and food, I always say, like, thank you, spirit, thank you, soul. I don't know. Even when I go to have some tobacco, I say, thank you, Mars. Um, yeah, always be thankful for your, you know, your experience and gifts. On another level, you may need to give things, well, but on the psychological level, it may be time to break down the illusions you have held that restrict your actions or ideas. Uh, this could be changing your stubbornness, Jupiter conjunct uh, Uranus. Dragonfly me medicine always beckons you to seek out the parts of your habits which, need, which you need to change. Have you put on too much weight? Have you started to look like a scarecrow? Have you tended to the changes you have wanted to make in your life? 
If you feel the need for change, call to Dragonfly to guide you through the mist of illusion to the pathway of transformation. See how you can apply the art of illusion uh, to your present question or situation, and remember that things are never completely as they've seen. That's cool. Take it. Metamorphosis. Be yeah. transformative. Let's take away there. It's time to take the sweatshirt off, folks. It's getting warm out. Nice. That spring feeling, right? Same here. Love it. Oh, yeah, same. Love it. Good. One of those dragonflies you described that birds in the water. If you accidentally caught one of these larvae in your fish tank, you'll know. Oh, really? That's neat. They will eat the fish. <laughs> Oh, no way! That's crazy. Yeah, they are. They are ravenous. Like seriously. Yeah. You know. Any anything they can grab, they will eat. Damn. Dragonfly. Dragonfly larvae that are like uh, underwater. So long, I think it's like, uh, I forgot how many, I don't know if it's weeks, however long they live underwater, but it's, it's quite a long time. Yeah, it's, it's, it's quite, it's quite a while actually. Which is impressive to have two different like systems. I mean, I guess we do too. We're in a sack of water inside of the placenta or what mm -hmm. have you. We come out and we breathe this shit. We shed our skin. Well, I guess we don't show our stuff. Cut our umbilical cord now. <laughs> All right. Then you get circumcised and now uh, you're good to go. But then it's just, in a sense, it's the same for everything born in an egg. Right, yeah. I mean, you're like, you've got this internal feeding source, this tube you're connected to. Must be breathing through it, too. Maybe you're breathing the person, the mother's air. Uh, magical. Kind of ugly when we come out with a tube attached to this. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Animals do too, right? Like some mammals do. Some mammals. And then they chop off their, they bite the umbilical cord and chew it. And I just think some of them eat it. Mm -hmm. Crazy. Yeah. Well. Ever the pass after, up a free snack? The after birth and uh, and the birth sack. I wonder if that's what the uh, predators are attracted to, like when a moose moose is given birth, and you know the wolf mm -hmm. come up and baby moose and stuff. And I wonder if they're after those magical things because the elite are. I mean, we're all well, our circumcised that's people. That, that's a lot of energy there. It is a lot. Of I think that's um, stem cells in your umbilical cord, right? Like they can grow into anything. Maybe we had a frontal tail. Maybe we'll call our umbilical cords tails in there in the front. Frontal tail. What do you got for uh, cards? You got some fungus cards? Bob? Yeah. Oh, we got some magic cards. Q. Let's see here. Feral Prowler, Pouncing Cheetah, Savannah Lions. Dude, we got some cat cards. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, these are Savannah Lions is a very good card, too. <laughs> oh. yeah. yeah. Bit of a shame you couldn't flip the image, but yeah, it's a turn one, turn two, turn three casting so that's a really good hand to have oh all the beasts nice i like that it kind of reminds me of the saturn and mars we were talking about or i'm sorry uh mars and yeah no yeah mars and saturn wasn't that what it was yeah yeah saturn mars are together in pisces and then jupiter yarn are together in Taurus. yep yeah here 
Yeah, so that's cool. I like that. Yeah, I got a. Uh, I got the. I got two mushroom decks. So I'm gonna draw one from. Burns. Watch nice. be the same card. Go. Drum roll. All right, we got the black truffle. Other one, we got the ten of wands with the blackening wax caps. Then you guys have. I don't think we've gotten that one yet. Blackening. <clears throat> wow, they look, they look pretty cool. Uh, it's in Britain, Britain, Ireland. It looks like it's in uh, the place where people drive backwards. <laughs> people eat them in the UK. What? The blackening wax cap. I think. Um, I don't see. know if they live through it, but let's see here. It's high gross Cybe Conica. It's the last. Oh, yeah. Well, let me read the book on the black truffle here. <clears throat> oh, truffle? <clears throat> yeah, there's two of them. That was the. Uh, this is the uh, Mycologia deck. Okay. Mycologia. So it says black truffle. Huber melanosporum. Uh, luxury, sensuality, and self-care. <clears throat> Troubles have been historically prized across the world as a, as delicacy and continue to play an important role in haughty cuisine worldwide. They have even been referred to by some as the diamonds of the kitchen. The truffle itself is the fruiting body of a subterranean fungus and therefore is typically found in close association with tree roots. Uh, black truffle asks us to get to the root of our own situations surrounding food and pleasure <clears throat> and is intimately liked or intimately linked to the second chakra. Are you able to take ple pleasure in the good things in life without overdoing them? Or do you deny yourself what you truly deserve? Black Truffle encourages us to seek balance, but also to be good to ourselves when it is appropriate. Everybody needs some pampering and TLC from time to time. If you haven't been making it a priority, and especially if you find yourself always energetically focused on giving to others, now might be a good time to focus on taking care of yourself. Sometimes it is hard to be good to ourselves without feeling guilty, but black truffle comes as a reminder that we must all set aside time for deliberate cocooning, meditation, or introspection, or other forms of self-love. Looks like it's found across Europe. Yeah, for for the re for the random fact of the day, they cost between a thousand and four thousand dollars per pound. Oh my god! Black truffles. Yeah. Holy. That's crazy, huh? Looks like they grow in Oregon too. Oregon has the garlic truffle or the white truffle. Oh wow! Okay. I don't know if I've ever seen a truffle. I feel like I've seen them before, but never knew what they were. <laughs> they look good. Uh, <laughs> serious. It's like balls of poop. In, 
in Italy, they train dogs specifically to go and uh, look for them. Go to farm. Yeah, pigs can find them too, right? Yeah, but pigs will eat them and dogs won't. Uh, huh. That's yeah. weird. They're yeah, harvested. Like tra- like, it's, it's like training a hunting dog, right? You can train your hunting dog not to eat what you just shot. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Yep. Your dad had a bird dog. It would go retrieve it in the swamp and bring it back without eating it. Yeah, yeah. You, can, you can't train a pig to do that. <laughs> Pigs just like trouble here. Yum, 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 yum. Huh. Yeah, God, they're expensive. Wow. Looks like they, uh, certain types of trees. Looks like oaks, hazelnut, cherry, and other deciduous trees. Hazelnut is a bush, pretty much, though. Looks like uh, you harvest them in late autumn and winter. Hmm. Huh. Takes all year. Takes all year then for them to fungo fungivate. Wow. Well, wow, now I'll pay attention for. It. Wait, are they only West Coast? Yeah, I think like Oregon. Oh, there's different kinds uh, of them. There's white truffles. I like the part in the book how, or the reading talked about can you enjoy pleasurable things without letting them overtake you I have a tough time with that one that's part of my reason for not trying a lot of certain substances I imagine I'll like them a lot then I'll become addicted or want to have them all the time and I'd rather just not even try it because I know I'll like it right um, I just I don't want to like ruin my feeling center like I don't want to feel something awesome and then like realize i can't keep using it because if i do it'll cause long-term damage like i don't know huh. i don't know uh so the other card i got is the ten of wands it is the blackening wax caps <clears throat> here we go uh this is the midnight magic uh, tarot deck by Sarah Richards. Huh? It says, Ten of yeah. Wands, blackening wax caps. Refreshing rain clouds are on the way. Wait, what? <laughs> we already got a bunch. Um, a welcome sign, as this card signifies burnout. Blackening wax caps turn from brilliant orange to glossy black as they age. This signifies not their demise but the strength gained from overcoming life's burdens delay your reading for a short time if this card presents itself uh 10 yeah so the upright well i guess it has upright and reverse but we the upright is burden overwhelmed hard work the weight of your responsibilities is heavy let the heat emanating from your objective fuel, uh, from your objective, fuel your determination. If you're feeling overwhelmed, know that you are so close to your achievement. Interesting. Yeah, it's, it's pretty awesome there. Ooh, they do turn black. Cool. Creepy. Kind of like the sun goes from a brilliant orange to black, shiny black. Yeah. Awesome. A oh, very nice. I always see wands too as earthy. Whenever you see the wands, they're like creative. What do you you use a magic wand to make something appear, manifest? The spring, you know, is the time when the things pop out and appear and manifest. And it's the wand, the earth, uh, you know, very Taurusy Venusian fertility symbol. The wand. Kind of got and in there too, so it's like you're 
accompanying something, giving it a compliment, you know, a friend. Taurus, Tor means friend, best friend, Tor. Could have had these into the gym. For Mel, uh, no poor um. <laughs> oh, a lot. <laughs> Yeah, the blackening wax cap they grow in North America, Europe, Asia, and in Australia. Not in Africa and South America. Mao, what's up? What are you rebelling for, Kitty? In me. Oh, you, they already have food. Uh, <laughs> at me. Give me attention. Yeah, give me attention. Yeah, that's it. Give me attention. I'm right here. <laughs> Trip me over me. Get, 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 get up from your chair and 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 love me. <laughs> yeah. Treat me as the god I am. Uh, oh, yeah. How's your squirrels doing, Barry? They're doing pretty damn good, man. They're um, excellent. Yeah, they're pretty damn happy. Charlie's turning uh, like six years old here soon. Getting, okay, I guess he's got another nineteen years. They lived twenty-five damn years inside. Damn. Crazy. I know it. I mean, wow, that's, that's crazy long, man. I know it's like longer. It's like getting up there with birds and turtles and shit. Right. Mm-hmm. But um yeah man, they're all happy. We got um the whole downstairs and then one bedroom upstairs are dedicated to squirrels in this house. I mean they got a lot of living space. That's excellent. No vacations though. You can't go on a vacation because somebody's gonna stay back to watch the squirrels. I mean one or the other can go, but you can't go together because Yeah, I know what that's like. I got chameleon. Hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exotic animals. It's hard to, you can't really. It's hard to take them, and it's hard to like get someone to watch them. And I mean, if you guess nobody, wants, nobody <laughs> wants to feed them. No, nobody wants to feed them bugs. In the case of reptiles, that's a bit of the yeah, issue. That's Every, true. Everybody gets the heebie-jeebies from the hey, bugs. Can you give them uh, two blood nuggets a day, please? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and in, in the case you keep snakes like here, can you can you please thaw a mouse and then feed it to the snake? Oh Make sure it's warm, otherwise it won't eat it. Okay, yeah, Paul I would. Green, here for the feeding. Yeah, I would for sure. <laughs> Maybe we should start a business, exotic animal sitting. <laughs> Need your squirrels food? I got you. You guys got you. <laughs> ex ex exotic pet care. We'll, we'll we'll drive around and take care of your pets. You can go on a holiday. <laughs> My cheetah likes to be rubbed in the morning and the evening. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, right. they can they can become really specific with things. <laughs> right. I don't do cheetahs. Sorry. <laughs> you don't get a vacation. Oh, that would be a fool. It's the same with the cats. They're half forest cats or Maine Coons, and they want they want a lot of attention. Oh yeah, those Maine. Yeah, they do. Yeah, 
cats get me at night. Like when I'm getting ready to go to bed, they get all excited. Like, so it's time to come keep you up. <laughs> Wouldn't you know it? Like seriously. <laughs> I've it's got like all they... kinds of toys for them, and they never ever play with it unless I'm interacting with the toy. Yeah, <laughs> and it's night, so bedtime. They're... Ah, well, now it's time to run around with the plastic band, and so they're playing well, with you. <laughs> pull like, oh, something, pull something toy. over, make it fall on the ground, and <laughs> God. that's her funny. Oh yeah, I I wouldn't I wouldn't do without him. Yeah, I was never much of a cat person, but I've been over the last three, four years. They've been growing on me a lot. I kind of, kind of swing in the pendulum a little bit more towards cats than dogs. Dogs, I, I don't know. I don't want to say I'm sick of them because I really love all animals. But I could have cats in my future, but I think I'm going to let the dogs live their happy existence out, and I don't, I don't really want to get another dog. Um, mm. I mean, I, I like dogs. It's just I don't. So with dogs, I feel like. I feel bad. I guess it's a reflection of my own guilt, like for not taking them on. I mean, I take, we take dogs on like multiple walks a day. You know, it's not that we don't do so. I just feel like it's never enough. Like they can go do shit all day and they're, and they're always like, Oh, on your schedule, master, you know, whatever you want. <laughs> but the cat, yeah, that's, that's cat, cats like, no, hear me now. You yeah. know, we're doing this, you know, um, I'm in oh, heat. Yeah. You're gonna rub my ass. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have that because my cats came neutered. From oh me. yeah, no, we got none of our shit. <laughs> but we got I, yeah, but I, I I know exactly what that's like. Oh yeah, just raising your butt in the air and yep. you just butt in the, the air. And you're like. There's an end of a hot dog sitting in your face. You're just like, what the hell? <laughs> Good. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh man. Um, I mean, they're all special, but uh, I can. I feel like cats can entertain themselves a little bit, where dogs are kind of. All right, I guess I'm gonna go lay down and sleep since you're gonna go human. Yeah. Um, Cat, cats will find find means at least the, the the inquisitive ones and the ones that need the attention. Like these two, they really need human interaction. My previous cat, Baka, the Persian. She was just like, I'm, 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 I'm gonna be sleeping here, or here. <laughs> Alternatively, here or there. I, I don't care as long as I can sleep. <laughs> yeah, you, you put my food here, and we're good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was an absolutely no care kitty. These two are more like, hey, did you just close the hallway door? <laughs> right. Give, give, dog it another, doesn't... give it another second he'll be at it again i feel like i'm always telling yeah. dogs stuff they can't do like hey stop barking nobody's here you know no we're not going out right now or i mean it's always like keeping them in line where cats i'm always like respecting their wishes like fuck okay one second yeah i'm getting to it okay <laughs> yep yep 100 <laughs> percent. because i'm like about to get up and open the hallway door for him <laughs> Right here, shit. <laughs> In the case of the dog, you just tell him like, no. Yeah, no, we ain't doing that. You can't do that. We already talked about that. Um, <laughs> yeah, you're okay with giving dogs direction, but like cats, it's like, okay, what do you want to do? Yeah. All right. Well, well, sounds good. <laughs> hey, you tell yeah. him. You can tell him what to do from time to time. They just look at you, and you get the virtual middle finger. Like, nah. <laughs> right. Maybe that's how God and the like the devil are like, like maybe the devil's like devil dog, right? Um, you're always telling the devil like, no sin, get away. We're not doing that today, you know. But on God, it's like if God comes in, you're like, whoa, drop everything. What do you want, God? Yeah, what's up? What are we doing? <laughs> you know, it's, um, <laughs> so true. God must be a cat. That's it's pretty crazy, but it's probably some big ass pl platonic perfect cat somewhere and it's i don't know i'm sure all the cat things here are just like video cameras watching us i mean you yeah, ever seen that meme with the with, with the hollowed out cat with an alien inside controlling it <laughs> it sounds about right yeah i'm gonna look that up post it in uh 
Where should, where, should, where should I pose that? What is that movie, Men in Black, where the little guys operate and little green man's running the control center? Yeah. I, can, I believe it. I mean, they're just, there really are opposites, you know, cats and dogs. It's like night and day. It's pretty neat how you can get an opposite um, category in, 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 in animal behavior. Like, I wonder if everything has, like, is there an opposite to a dragonfly, you know, or awesome? I'll, I'll put um, it in uh, delicious words. Right. Fuck, I think I got poison ivy yesterday. Shit. Oh, man, I just got rid of my poison ivy because I went down to Florida with it, and I just, you know, sat in the ocean for a little bit, and the salt corroded away, and it felt great. And uh, I just w went and hung five squirrel boxes in trees, and one of the trees had a bunch of... Like probably Shit. 20 different poison ivy poison oak actually i guess they're called going to like the hairy you know those hairy vines that you're not supposed to touch mm. well oh, i i put gloves on you know but i probably put the gloves on touch the stuff and then touch the gloves when i took them off and then touch my foot and take my nose and you know from there it's <laughs> can get spread pretty quick um i did take one of those choppers and i chopped the the roots off like there's probably like I said like 15 20 of them just swallowing a tree up man a big oak just twisting all the way up it and I was like oh, it was the only tree I didn't have a squirrel box and I was like I have to hang one in this tree because there's you know the other 18 trees are taken and so I, I did it but paying the price now but I mean I'm telling you that when I put up on that tree it's got a double deck double entry exit in case a predator comes in it go out the other door and it's got a water dish on top with a tailor-made golf ball so i mean the guy is set up he can show all his squirrel buddies this cool golf ball he can take them to the watering hole he can they can go run through the double doors sit on the double patio i mean it's pretty good squirrel life yeah let's we'll take a look at uh, if i make a mortal here illegals can move in oh god <laughs> it's like, oh, it's old. Uh, what do you got, Tom? <clears throat> so I updated our numbers with um, our cards and a couple extra words. Ooh. Got some intriguing matches. More one on ones with the strategy. Uh, the millennials need to. Erbium. Asian. 19 and 19 on Feral as the sun and Pharos, iron, Pharos, light, field, and the iron field, light in the field. That's kind of neat right there. Maybe that's what piezoelectric is. What's 96 on uh, angle and blackening wax caps. <laughs> nice. Yeah. When something is Pharos magnetic, what does that mean? Is that like a natural magnetic in it? Like a natural magnetic quality? Instead of a man made? I don't know. Let me look up the word. Pharos. Pharos magnetic. Let's see if we got it. 600 even on XX. Okay, so then. Pharos. 70. I guess it's something to do with iron. Have an iron. Well, you can have iron that's ferrous and iron that's not, or and the ferrous iron has got magnet, like it can attract a magnet. Hmm. A bouncing cheetah and the feral prowler both are 149. Two magic cards. Oh, here we go, ferro. So a word forming allocant indicating the presence of derivation from iron from Latin ferro. Um, combining iron with um, possibly just connection to iron pertaining to or extracted from iron. Hmm. Okay. Here we go. Here's 
What is that kind of iron called that's supposed to be this mythical different kind of iron? Is it earth, real earth iron, real iron? Or, you know mm. what that term is? You haven't heard you of You mean it? like that, that pillar in uh, in New Delhi, the iron pillar? Yeah, that doesn't rust. rust. Yeah, 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 it's some kind of divine iron that's isn't subject to rust and corrosion. But I, I heard they um, they got that to happen by lathering an oil on it for like a couple hundred years, or something like that. <clears throat> they knew they knew the absorption cycle and how long it would last, absorbed and prevent rust and all this shit. What what they give as a reason is it's not rusted because it was made of ninety eight percent wrought iron. Due to the presence of high amounts of phosphorus, as much as one percent, against less than zero point point zero five percent in today's iron, and the absence of sulfur and magnesium in the iron ore are the main reasons for it remaining rust-free. So the yeah, so the sulfur, magnesium prevent or are what caused it to rust. Wow. So that seems like a more pure iron without the sulfur and the magnesium in it then. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. That immediately makes me think, would they add that stuff to uh, make it rust? Because we need an economy that keeps breaking down. Right. So we buy new stuff. And if you live near the ocean, like, and if you have anything metal, like it will rust, just like the wind blowing across your property mm. over like the salt eats at, eats away at it, oxidizes it. Uh, if you see too, I added the uh, ferromagnetic etymology. It was behaving Sweet. like iron in a magnetic field. Um, I thought this is cool. Uh, the magnetic one's pretty cool. Having the properties of a magnet attested from 1630s in the figure to meaning having powers of attraction. Uh, hmm. Capable of being attracted by a magnet. 1837. Magnetical. 1580s. Magnetics. The science of magnetism. 1786. It has a poem. It says, She that should all parts to reunion bow. She that had all magnetic force alone to draw and fasten sundered parts in one. She whom wise nature had invented then when she observed that every sort of men did in their voyage in this world's sea stray and needed a new compass for their way. That's by Don... An anatomy of the world. <laughs> cool. Reminds me of One Piece. <laughs> all right. Maybe that's how we get the land of misfits. How all these weird parts, you know, come here and we use magnetism to glue things together that don't normally go together. Easy enough. Maybe, yeah, I mean, it's gravity and magnetism seem like the same thing. If you look at the One Piece map, it suggests it's a toroid, the center of a toroid. Right? I saw it. Uh, it, it like, the, the, the design of the map does not suggest a globe. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I saw a thing, the um, sun and the moon. The moon is just a counter-reflection of the sun. And they do an, a figure eight through the center of the disc, essentially. Like, oh, imagine we live on a coin, two sides of the same coin. And the sun rises as it comes up the smaller part of the figure eight. It rises through the north and, and on the right side, the east. And then it does a loop up top and it sets in the west, but it goes back down through the I don't know, center hole in the north and it goes underneath when the moon and then the moon rises, which is the counter reflection. It's, it was a neat thing. Oh, wow. So like it's not, it's, the sun isn't setting around a curve. It's going in a hole, essentially. 
Which, if you think of the way light is at sunset, how it goes up sometimes, like a fan, mm. that would make sense for a sun going into a hole. Like, you can only see the rays that are shooting up. Wait, explain that again. So, it, like, either the sun is going behind the curve of the Earth as a globe, or, you know, we got a, the sun goes somewhere. Oh, and it, right. in this theory, going through a hole in the center of a, like a coin, like a donut, and it makes the figure eight, right? It comes up through the hole on the east side, on the right side, it makes a loop, and then it comes back down to the west and descends and goes back through the hole. And it, you know, does a loop on the bottom, comes back up, you know, we have another day. But it, it's like the figure eight. Uh, yeah, the, uh, the analemma. Yeah, the uh, whatever. And that's the same pattern that we see when you record the sun in the same spot at the same time of day for a year. You'll see that pattern, right? Yep. Wow. Um, I added the numbers the, for Pharaoh. Pharaoh. <clears throat> Pharaoh. Ferromagnetic, magnetic, uh, and magnetical, which is 1500s. <laughs> we got a 999, which is pretty cool. Crazy. Yeah. I'll pulse it just a sec here. Oh, I'm looking at the old one. Okay. Here we go. Most of the one piece map too. Yeah, I see that one piece. What is that? One piece is one of the longest running animes ever, I think. Yeah. Oh. Like two thousand. Yeah, all those little islands are like whole worlds, essentially. Wow. And they have compasses that align to specific islands. And I think it's kind of like how they, I don't know, power levels, you know, like, oh, we're going to go to this island. But in order to get there, you need to get the compass that can even take you to that area. <laughs> so you have to get oh, yeah, something that. from there that's based or get like special compasses. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. The, the first episode was aired in 1999. There is a, 1,100 of them. My gosh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the north's on a straight 45. That's neat. So, check it Back. out. Oh, go ahead. You're good. Go ahead. I was going to say, we got the spring has sprung, got the 666, and then we got ferromagnetic has the 999. <laughs> oh, nice. And um, Iron Aries Mars is right near that area in spring with, you know, of course, Equinox and Aries and Cardinal Fire. So yeah. it's pretty neat. Ferro and ferromagnetic share 73 on reverse and reverse full deduction. Uh, wow. So that's a good segue into this book. Let me talk about this book briefly. Because uh, <laughs> we're talking about blood and we're talking about iron and blood. Mostly importantly, mm -hmm. blood. We've talked about blood a lot on the show, mostly from Steiner's perspective. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And so uh, Steiner Books uh, actually had a this book, um, and I bought it because, you know, um, here's worth a thousand words, right? Uh, it's called right. uh, Corona Blood Phenomena uh, by Inge Just Nostansky, uh, and uh, I'll post I'll post it on the browser. Um. 
this is. Uh, <clears throat> uh, so it's basically a uh, examinations of blood uh, from healthy, uh, vaccinated, and recovered patients. Uh, let's see. Uh, this book was occasioned by many of the patients who sought medical treatment after uh, the COV or after receiving a COV uh, vaccine. The blood of these patients was studied using the method of drop image micros uh, microscopy. The results of this research, including examinations of the blood of uh, vaccinated and unvaccinated, as well as healthy and recovered patients, is documented here, along with normal cerebral spinal fluid, CSF, and the CSF of a patient after three vaccinations. The drop image method has been used for over 20 years. The phenomena in the drop images documented here have never been encountered before. COVID illness and vaccination bring about an unprecedented change in the blood. In some cases, a complete destruction of the protein structures. This raises many questions. Uh, blood is the central organ of the human organism, not only maintains our life, but is the foundation of human freedom in perception, thinking, feeling, and action. This book by no means represents a finished scientific study, but rather an ongoing documentation demonstrates the importance of the integrity and wholeness of the human body. The task of the physician is to help protect in this integrity. The task of science is to address the many unanswered questions that arise through such research. Uh, and it's talking about this was a translation from, I guess, the German version. Uh, and uh, it basically has, it's all giant photographs of blood. Very cool. Is it pretty distinguishable on the difference? Um, pure blood versus tainted blood uh yes do they compare it to people who did not take it yes yeah so the beginning like right now on the stream see there are pictures of just regular blood uh, and what it looks like unvaccinated is regular blood still possible you think or even if you didn't get it you're still been subject to the viral stuff going around and you've got things in you and your blood that you picked up from the environment you think i mean that's I a true know. statement I, I don't know i don't know you'd have to probably get tested i guess have this done so you yeah. can look at it um so yeah i mean this covers so this these pictures still are on and here it is so our in vitro studies of some of the vaccine blood and serum and you see these like crystalline structures that are being formed. Here's this is a old structure. I mean, they look like ivy and icicles. Hilarious how this one looks exactly like a. That's hilarious. This is with the uh, viro and version experimental therapy. It's like an mm -hmm. um, so these are all in intro. Yeah, you can see it's like stringier, and you have like these deranged. They deranged, but like this one's interesting. You have what like, look like lines, but you have these extra points that are, uh, went off. Uh, yeah, they don't. There's definitely, you can tell there's definitely something happening with your blood structures here. Yeah. This is, uh, Edigam? I don't really know what these names of this stuff. I mean, it had RNA in it, messenger RNA stuff. So, I mean, that's big. <laughs> like, that changes your communication system the way it's, what its directions are. Pretty cool. Uh, this whole thing is pictures. I haven't gone through everything, read all of it yet. Uh, I just got it. But this one right here is chapter three, blood alteration after the vaccination. And 
see these like white spots that are forming inside the cell i mean that's very obvious here and then hmm. oh, it's like see. a mucus this one say it's 30 minutes after the see that it's literally being pulled apart and building i mean it looks like mold you know it looks like what mold does kind of just starts building on things yeah and like obviously destroying stuff like this one's terrifying it creates a whole new geom it just kind of it almost looks like a lint piles of you got these long ones that <laughs> Jeez. Um, in this part, you're seeing uh, some of the, like, you can see growths actually forming in these cells. Yeah, so, um, Reiner had a lot so don't of play blood. With blood. There, jeez. Your blood is your will, you know. Whole meaning of getting fired up. Wow, this is insane. This is, uh, with Astro's... And like, uh, two times. Oh, wow, this is after three of them. <laughs> Looks like it's cracking crystal. Like a spider web? Sort of, yeah. I mean, it's nuts. It's... This one looks like it's being I literally... Can... I think people can clean it out still, I mean... Be nice if you could just placebo it out. Be like, I don't believe in it. I don't believe I took that down. <laughs> you know what it looks like though? It looks like the solar eclipse, but with those extra with the planes that were adding streaks and guy right while the thing was happening. <laughs> yeah, that's what it looks like. Here, have some chemtrails. <laughs> right. I forget there. There, you'll need these clips. Oh, this one's really gross. It has like, like growths going on there. I don't know. Uh, check it out though if you want. Uh, so, What's the name of the book? It's called Corona Blood Phenomena. So very cool. Okay. Highly recommend it. Yeah, blood. Yeah, that's what's for dinner. Chlorophyll. It's the same structure as blood. I think that's why eating plants is a deep... Yeah, you go pee in a cup. Huh? She's got to pee, but there's somebody in the bathroom. We have two bathrooms. You, you can go use the other bathroom. I can that out here. That's fucked up. There's a cigarette on the set. Okay. <laughs> Just... Why? Where are you... Yeah, that was great. Stick around, fuck. Um, yeah, pretty cool. Um, I'm I'm really looking forward to reading the rest of this book. Oh yeah, Bob. Holy shit! Wow, that's intense. Did you pee? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> It's the don't use the don't Yeah, don't you shouldn't keep it in the kitchen after you pee in it. Well, I'll put it somewhere. <laughs> oh my god. We well, missed, we missed that in the sense like Ahura was saying some things like uh ferro means material can be magnetized. Right. Ferromagnetic materials can hold magnetic fields. Paramagnetic fe paramagnetic materials don't react to magnetic fields, and diamagnetic materials repel magnetic fields I wonder if that's what like an insulator is like a paramagnetic oh that's a cool way to language it yeah paramagnetic because you can find ferromagnetic um, rocks up I think up north what are you doing I have to clean out the car because I have to dry it there's a bunch of branches in there. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna be over here. I don't know. I mean, you just aquarium, whatever you need to aquarium. <laughs> it's like every day around here. 
I'm not saying it's bad. <laughs> it's bad. <laughs> Yeah, happy anniversary there. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm probably going to sign off since I got a vacuum going. Background. Yeah, no worries. I got to make some food too. Time to clean our rooms. Yeah, time to start your days. Um, Yeah, thanks everybody. Uh, It's been fun. I hope everyone got to see the eclipse. Yeah. yeah, it's been good. Absolutely. Enjoy spring, you know, it's here. It's spring has sprung. Yeah, absolutely. I'm down in the creek definitely, right now. Definitely am. Yeah, get out there and soak it up. Yeah. Todd and Mike. Hi, guys. Have a nice um, afternoon, evening. Keep that cat in line, Mike. I pro. I, 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 Possibly couldn't. He's bound. <laughs> so that cat will keep him in line. <laughs> More likely. Know, I'm not... I'll keep bending a knee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, All right guys. Nice Cheers. All right. Later. Later. Thanks, everybody, for the team. Peace.